Section 1.6 is about configuring and verifying IPv4 address and subnetting. Let's talk about the basics of IPv4 address first. What is an IPv4 address? It's a 32-bit address written in dotted decimal format. And it consists of two parts, the network and host. Historically, IP addresses were divided into five classes, A to E. In modern networking, classful addressing is largely obsolete because classless is the standard now. But it's still covered on the CCNA and helps us understand subnetting and default mask. Let's start with class A. This is the IP address range, subnet mask, number of networks, and host. It's used for large organizations or ISPs. Keep in mind that 127.0.0.0 is reserved for loopback and is not assignable. Next is class V. These are the range, subnet mask, number of networks, and host. It's used for medium to large organizations. Class C has this range, subnet mask, number of networks, and host, and typically used for small networks, home, and office lands. Then we have class D. Just keep in mind the IP range. It doesn't have a default subnet mask because they are not designed for traditional networking where subnetting is needed and they are also not assignable to host. They are typically used for multicast groups. Multicasting allows a single sender to send data to a group of receivers simultaneously, like streaming media, distributing stock codes, or broadcasting updates in online games. And last is Class E. Same with Class D, they don't have a default subnet mask and are not assignable to host. It's typically used for experimental purposes or research. Here are the key things to remember for the exam. Classless inner domain routing or CIDR is now the standard, but you still need to know these classes for the exam. Also memorize the first octet ranges. And understand the default subnet mask of classes A, B, and C. Remember that 127.0.0.0 is loopback and not part of class A range. And classes D and E are not assignable to host. Let's now talk about IP address subnetting. What is subnetting? It divides a network into smaller, manageable pieces. And it also helps efficiently use IP address space. For example, let's subnet 192.168.10.0 slash 24 into four subnets. In this problem, we need to create four subnets. To create four subnets, you ask, how many bits do I need to borrow from the host part to make four subnets? We can use the formula 2 to the power of n, where n is the borrowed bit. Then, we need to figure out how many bits we're borrowing first. Let's say you want to create 4 subnets from a slash 24 network. Let's start with the smallest bit of 1. So, using the formula, 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2, and that shows borrowing just 1 bit isn't enough because it only creates 2 subnets. We will try to borrow more bits and see if 2 works. Using the formula again, 2 to the power of 2 equals 4 subnets. And we need 4 subnets, so we will borrow 2 bits. Next step is to calculate the new subnet mask. Keep in mind that the original subnet mask is slash 24. So to calculate the new subnet mask, we add the borrowed bit, which is 2, to the original subnet mask, which is 24, and the result is slash 26, and this is the new subnet mask. Next step is to get the number of hosts. So we now have slash 26 for the new subnet mask. We can count the remaining bits and they will be used for the host. These are the zeros in the subnet mask. We can use this formula to get the number of hosts, where h is the number of host bits. To get the number of usable hosts, we use this formula where h is the number of host bits and subtract 2 for the network address and the broadcast address. Going back to our number of bits, because our new subnet is 26, 
That means 26 are for network, so 6 are left for host. We can now apply the formula and we now get the number of hosts. Next step is to create the subnets. Now that we know how many hosts we need, we can create the subnets and start at the given address, which is 192.168.10.0 and increase by 64 each time, and this is called the increment. Then, the broadcast address will be the last IP address for the subnet, and the host address are between the network and the broadcast address. Let's now talk about what the network, host, and broadcast address are used for. The network address is the first address in a subnet. It identifies the subnet itself and cannot be assigned to a device. This address is used by routers to route traffic to the subnet. The host address are all IP addresses between the subnet ID and the broadcast address. These can be assigned to devices like computers, switches, routers, and printers. You cannot assign .0 or .255 because they are reserved. Broadcast address is the last address in a subnet. They are used to send data to all hosts in that subnet. It is also not assignable to a device. Let's now configure IPv4 on Cisco devices. You can use the IP address command to set the IP address and subnet mask on an interface. We can also use the ping command to check reachability. The show IP interface brief views IP addresses and interface status. And the show running config command displays the current active configuration running on the device, which is saved on the RAM. This includes interface IP, routing settings, VLANs, and more. This command helps verify if your IP settings are configured properly, especially after changes. And we can use the traceroute command to test the path a packet takes to reach a specific IP address. It helps you identify where connectivity might be failing, especially across multiple routers. Here are more exam tips. Practice subnetting speed. Time yourself. Subnetting questions should take less than two minutes. Understand the slash notation or CIDR. Slash notation tells you the number of network bits. To divide a large network into small, more efficient subnetworks. Formula to calculate the number of usable hosts in a subnet. Default subnet mask of a Class C IP address. What address is reserved for the network ID and the subnet? What is the default subnet mask of a Class A IP address? What address is reserved for the broadcast address in a subnet? What is the default subnet mask of a Class B IP address?